This is my very first touch designer tutorial and today I am going to show you how to make this CRT effect with the scan lines. All right, go ahead and delete this. First of all, we're going to add a base just so we can keep this contained and export it as a component if uh, you want to use it in your other projects. Just name this CRT effect. And the first node we're going to add is a movie file in. And just for the sake of a tutorial, I'm going to pick a movie here. From this, so we can have an input for our base, add an in. And from this in, get a info chop. Drag that on there. And in here, set your scope to res asterisk. And we'll use this on a couple other operators in this chain. After that, you're going to get a texture 3D and a time machine. This is going to give us that interlacing scan line effect. To make those scan lines, get a ramp and go to your common tab and export your resolution onto there. So this will always stay the same size, no matter what video you put in. Then we're going to set this to vertical and copy paste this. For this first one, move this over a little bit and set this, your alpha to zero. Move this up a little more and make it a little smaller so you get it like that white bar that you get coming from a CRT. Go into your second ramp and set your period to 0.01. So you get those really small lines. Add a constant And we're going to use this to control the speed of our scan. So do scan. Scan speed and set this to one for our ramps. And in here, add abs time dot seconds times OP. constant one scan speed. Now you have your lines moving with that scan speed. So if you change this here, it'll slow down a little bit. You can't see it because it's so small, but it's there, I promise. Then to keep this in sync, we're going to drag this here and bind it. All right, now that we have our scan line set up, add an over with the bar on top and the smaller scan lines on the bottom. Let's just make this a little slower for now. Then add a null with option or alt N and run that into the bottom of your time machine. And if you do that, you can see the interlacing offsetting kind of effect that you get. We're going to enhance that effect a bit with a displace. So grab a displace top and 
run that in from the null, and this is going to look really bad at first, but go ahead and change that horizontal displace weight to zero, and your vertical displace to 0 0.005. Get that ever so slight kind of warping with the scan lines. All right, from this displace, we're going to add a lens distort and we're going to use this for chromatic aberration. So copy this three times and add a reorder and drag each into the first, second, and third inputs and go ahead and add another constant. And this is what we're going to use for the strength of the chromatic aberration. Make sure this is all one word, otherwise it'll make new channels. And then set this to 0.01. First things first, we're going to drop references here, and we're going to use this a couple more times, so just copy that. And then in the second one, paste it again. This time, multiply it by two. And same thing here multiply it by three. So you all get slightly varying strengths of lens distortion, which you can see right along here. And then to fill this back out, select all these. K2, negative 0.1. And that'll fill this back out. It's still warp it a little bit. Next, we're going to offset these a little bit. Set the optical center in the second one to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and in the third to negative 0.1, negative 0.1. And in the reorder, this is going to separate out all these lens distortions and give us that slight chromatic aberration. And you'll see that as soon as we put in two, you get that separation in the colors, and three, you get more separation. And if you want to change the strength of that, you can make it much more intense or much less intense. After this reorder, we're going to add a little bit of film grain. So let's close this out here. First things first, add a noise top. Open the parameters here. Grab the info. And then set the period to zero. And in the transform, because we want a little bit of animation in our film grain, just do abs time dot seconds and you can see it gives us a little bit of animation there at a threshold and adjust it to your liking if you want less or more noise whatever you feel like then run this into a level post and Turn that opacity way down. We want a slight effect, not too much. Then add an over. And this is the bottom one, and this on top. And if we select this here, and turn that opacity down to your liking. So I think about there is good. And after this, we're going to give it that CRT curved effect here. So let's run another null out of here and insert a lens distort. And make this our active viewer. All right. Going to increase the K1 here ever so slightly to about 0.2. 
and you can really see that it gives us that like TV bubble screen. But if you don't want this big empty gap here, you can insert a transform and scale it up to about 1.1 or 1.2, whatever is your liking, just to get it back and borderless. Okay. After that, we're going to make these scan lines a little bit more pronounced. So let's add a multiply and from that multiply, we're going to get a, another level and a select. And for that select, we're going to grab that null. And you can see this is quite intense right now, but if we go into this level and range, adjust that out low until it's not too intense, but you can just barely see those scan lines. And you can really see that CRT effect come through a lot more now. Now, go ahead, one last thing, a little bit of color correction. Add a level. And in the RGB, just up the low G a little bit and maybe ever so slightly on the blue just to give it that like CRT green tinge. If you want to make this a component, go ahead, give this an out. And once you hit U, you have your own little CRT effect component. However, there are a couple more things you can do if you want to make this co component a little more customizable. So let's go back in here. And with these constants we added, it's going to be really easy to adjust the settings of this, like the chromatic aberration and the scan speed. And if you wanted to, maybe even the intensity of some of the other effects like our multiply over here, or even your film grain. But for this, we're just going to do the chromatic aberration and the scan speed. And for this chromatic aberration, actually, we're going to set this to our chop reference and copy this and paste it here just with a negative this time. Boop. All right. And now that chromatic aberration is a lot more uniform when we adjust it. Okay, so to make this component customizable, right click on your screen. I'm gonna turn this off real quick, just so it's not so distracting. Right click on your screen and customize parent component. So for this one, we're going to add a scan speed float parameter and an aberration strength, oops, strength float parameter. And for this aberration strength, just because it's so intense if it goes beyond a couple decimal points. Let's make this default 0.1, 0.05. Point, point make this a point zero and a point two for the max range there. And to find these components, right click again open parent parameters, custom, and for that aberration strength, we're just gonna drag it on here and bind. And same thing for the scan speed here and bind. And set that scan speed to something other than zero. 
We'll leave that at 0.55. And once you back out, you can adjust that scan speed on the fly or with your aberration strength, do the same thing. And you might also want to add something for the zoom, just so once you get that aberration strength really up there, it doesn't separate out. But again, that's up to you. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if I should make any other tutorials or what you have in mind. And thank you so much for watching.